What's up guys, Chris here from Bogus Prospecting. If you're new to the channel, it's great to see your smiling face. And if you're a brand new spanking hat sent in by Paul and Mel, welcome back. Today I'm cleaning powdered mustard gold using Microcell Dream Mat in a little home-built sluice. These concentrates were found in my last video, linked above, where Mick and I moved two cubic meters of sand to see just how much fine gold was hiding in it. And we were not disappointed. But today, we're gonna clean it up and weigh it up so we can actually figure out our per cubic meter rate. This is our mini sluice box. The sluice box itself was folded up by Arthur, a subscriber of mine. Thank you very much, Arthur. And this is the Dream Mat mini cell, well, micro cell. It's functionally almost identical to the regular Dream Mat, except the cells are super low profile, meaning that they don't trap very many heavies at all and leave you pretty much with nothing but gold and just a tiny little bit of black sands and ironstone to clean up. This is a question I get asked all the time. How do I separate my super fine gold from my heavies? And I usually start by running a little stripping run through a cleanup sluice like this. But I've also linked a video above where I do it with nothing but a pan. This is the way I originally learned how to do it. And if you don't yet have a cleanup sluice, it's definitely something worth checking out. So let's run you through the little home setup. We're using an 800 gallon an hour bilge pump, 18 amp hour battery. We've got a one inch feed hose that's coming up to a prototype spray bar, which I haven't quite worked out. And that's why I've got it set up kind of bodgily at the moment. So to get the angle, we've got it set up on the Gold Hog Multi Sluice. And then obviously we've got our little cleanup sluice in here. These are what we call professional director rocks. You can buy those at your local river. One of the principal first jobs we've got to do is give the sluice every chance of collecting it. So we're using the uh, Plus Tools floating magnet. And we're just going to extract anything that might be magnetic in there. Hey, there we go. Heaps. Now we only have a few teaspoons worth of concentrates here, but the gold's so fine that in all likelihood I'm gonna do multiple runs to make sure I collect as much of the gold in the mats as possible. Aiming to do three passes, that should collect 99.9% .9 worth of this powdered gold, I hope. I've already added soap to the water as a surfactant. Uh, basically that breaks the surface tension. Small gold has a tendency to float once it gets down to a relatively pure level, which means that it's just gold and no rock. Just put a little catch pan in place so that all the concentrates are gonna run into that and then we can tip that back through the sluice again and again and again and that's how we're gonna rerun our cons. Without further ado, I think you're gonna to wanna to see a little time lapse of me spoon feeding the sluice. We actually have a heap of micro gold loading in these top cells and I can't see any specks at all down here. This is what's left in the pan too. I can't physically get that out with a teaspoon, so I'm gonna suck that up with a snuffer bottle. After the first run, this is what we caught in our sluice and we were left with very minimal concentrates down the bottom. And this is what was in our catch pan. Now there is fine gold up here. I'm not gonna be able to show you with this lens. It is so small. So I'm gonna suck this up in a snuffer bottle and then tip this back in here and rerun the whole lot. This is exactly why you do multiple stripping runs. Look at all the fine gold loading up in these riffles. So we'll clean this one out, suck a bottle it up, and then do our third run. That's the results from our second run. So considerably less, but not an insignificant amount of gold. So 
So in our third stripping run, I'm pretty confident that all the gold that was in that pay dirt is now in this pan. This is the third stripping run and you can see it's right down to almost nothing. This is the gold that was in the catch pan. That was it. So we got very, very minimal losses after that third run. So at the end of all that, this is what we're left with to clean up, which is far easier to pan than the mountain of black we had at the start. But it still takes a very, very long time to separate this out. So what we're going to do is pan this down, and when we get pure gold at the top, we're going to suck a bottle load up, and then we're going to re-go through everything else we pan down, because I'll guarantee you, you're going to drag gold down. So you can see we're getting pretty close to almost pure gold. And it's at this point, we're going to suck a bottle it up. Alright, now we know there's gold left in there. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to shake it all back into the corner. And repan. There we go, we've got some more gold up the top. Up. Now we're going to do this a couple more times just to make sure we get every little nano speck, but that is how you strip your gold. I repeated that pan down stage three, three, three times. <laughs> now we've got gold sitting around 95% pure. I'd have to do it a couple more times to get every last little skerrick out, but I don't worry about doing that unless I'm going to smelt it and sell it. This is the gold that we recovered. You can see the coarser bits are absolutely minuscule. <laughs> and the minuscule bits are absolutely titsy. After I launched my last video, heaps of people questioned whether or not it was worth doing what Mick and I did based on how much gold we apparently didn't get. So before their heads explode trying to figure out the true value of the gold that we found, I'm going to run it down for you so you can look at some of my videos and other people's videos and understand the kind of ground they're on. I'm a micro miner. That means I'm a hobbyist, an enthusiast in gold. Very few micro miners make a living off the gold they find simply because of the size of their equipment. You do need to move quantity of soil to really make a big impact in your gold take. Unless you're in the right geo graphical area. If you're in an area like Central Victoria or Western Australia, many thousands of kilometers away from me, then you have the opportunity to dig up large nuggets with nothing more than a detector. So the true way to make money on gold is to be at least a small scale miner. We're talking about a wash pan that's fed with an excavator. Running this sort of test that I just did is actually how I'd set myself up if I was looking at doing small scale mining. Let me explain. Until we weigh out the gold, we won't know the actual mass, but let's just hypothesize for a moment. Say we found half a gram, and we found that in two meters of dirt. That means that we are getting quarter of a gram of gold in every meter. In today's gold price with Australian's currency, that works out to be roughly $22 per meter. Now here's the exciting part of this. Parker runs 200 meters an hour through his wash plants, one of his wash plants. That means that there would be roughly $4,200 an hour if we ran this dirt through Parker's wash plant. That means that this is roughly two ounces per hour. As been said time and again on Gold Rush that Parker is running on roughly 14 US dollars a yard which is almost identical to the gold we pulled out in the first foot and a half of sand on top and that gold gets much better the deeper you go. So the next time you see me pull gold out just like that and the title says a lot of gold extrapolate use that data to look at what i'm actually looking at which is how much gold is sitting in the ground there and what the actual true dollar value is this is our gold all cleaned up we're going to get it on the scales now the gold here is so fine it sticks to the steel even though this is clean steel so i have to use a paintbrush to sort of get it all into one area all right let's see how much we got and then we can do the actual maths Oh, 
0.28 of a gram, one third of a gram. That works out to be roughly $12.18 per cubic meter of sand, or $2,400 an hour if you're able to sluice the same sort of quantities they do on Gold Rush. And I can already hear the comment section blowing up asking, well, if it's that good, why don't you go and chase a full-size industrial sort of mining setup? And the simple answer is this. It's all about cost versus potential reward. I have worked out that there's only roughly 125 cubic meters of soil sitting there with this sort of gold in it, which is a hell of a lot of gold for someone like myself who's a micro miner. But it's not a lot of dirt for an industrial mine. And there's a local mine that recently opened up in my area that spent half a million dollars on just their permits before their infrastructure or even touching the soil that they've claimed. So it's just not worth it from that perspective. I'd rather stay as a hobby miner like I am at the moment and make a little bit of money that I put away for retirement or, you know, at the end of the year, a holiday. If you like this video, chances are you'll like a lot of the other videos that are up on my channel. So hit that subscribe button, the little bell in the corner, so you don't miss out on any of them. Subscribing is completely free after all, and it'll give you access to heaps of grisly content. And until next time, like that smash button. Peace, and I'm out.